Now I'm coming to the project results. So as we are almost at the end of the project, we can already say a few words of what we learned. So at the beginning of the project, we had the idea that we want to detect disease outbreaks as early as possible. What we can say at the end of the project is that we recognize that local phenomena are faster propagated to global levels. This means, for example, take for example the AHEC outbreak last year in Germany. It was a local phenomena. And for example, the um, ECDC in Stockholm or the World Health Organization were not informed, of course, not before the Robert Koch Institute provided uh, um, information to them. So in this case, our system, when they, these kind of users at the global levels use, would use our system and say that they, they would be earlier informed about this kind of information because the traditional reporting from one health organization to another takes time and it is not done immediately. Then we can also say that our methods help to identify new sources of relevant information. We also find out that we can confirm detected signals by additional sources. So when, for example, the um, established disease surveillance system detects some signal, then we can confirm this information by the information we find in social media data. And we can provide additional information that might probably help to assess the potential risk or to find the reason for the health threat and so on, for example, by tech clouds or other visualization possibilities. Within the MECO project, we are providing a tunable, explainable event identification system. That means that we are providing that the system allows to make advanced signal definitions. So it's not necessary for a user to look at all signals that are produced every day or every four hours, but that the user can make signal definitions and say, I'm interested in text messages that contain fever, cough, so some, some symptoms related to influenza-like illnesses or to symptoms for other kind of diseases. So here the user is really asked to make advanced signal definitions to specify his or her interest. With respect to the explainable event identification system, I have to say that um, the system provides links to original documents. So, as I mentioned, we aggregate information. We have, for example, hundreds of doc, uh, hundred of Twitter messages, and but the user at the beginning sees only a signal, reporting there is a signal about fever in Germany. But then the user has the possibility to have a look at these documents and to see whether the Twitter messages are reporting about real fever, so the people are really sick, or whether they are reporting about football fever and they are not really sick. So maybe they are sick of watching TV or watching football games, but they are not sick in the meaning of a public health threat. Here you can see some this kind, uh, this kind of um, visualization I just talked about. So that's a MECO portal, and we are presenting the signal information in this kind of word cloud, which is generated based on the text messages documents that contributed to this kind of to the signal. And here it's obvious that the signal deals with CAF. We can then also assess the single text messages to decide whether it's really a um, signal of interest or a real disease or not.
here we see another kind of visualization. This is provided by some web services we are producing. Um, this is an example from the AHEC outbreak last year. So we can plot, of course, the um, signal information also to geographical maps. Here you see Germany and it's a signal about AHEC in the Federal Republic of Germany. From this you can again go to the single document and see, for example, in this case it was clicked on the first a link that this was a Twitter message where a local local news agency reported about the AHEC AHEC virus. So coming back to the findings. Um, I would like to report now about the findings with respect to social media. So here, so one objective of the project was also to find out what can we learn from social media data with respect to disease surveillance. Here we learned that it is crucial to identify personal tweets relevant to specific health events. This means, so as, um, as you have seen in the screen before, there are also tweet, tweets or Twitter messages that come from newspapers or official organizations. But for early detection, it's very interesting to identify personal tweets from, from, uh, from persons like you and me who are reporting about yeah, people we met, about our own, about some observations we made. So that's, that's a, uh, information that we are mostly interested in. So here we need to come up with, we came up with some classification methods that go beyond keyword-based filtering. It allows us to identify personal tweets. Then another observation is that users rarely use official terminology like we have in, in physicians, like physicians use the um, disease names that are officially, but users' Twitter messages don't contain this kind of terminology. So a predefined list of terms is not, not possible to use in this context. So we need to expand the keyword lists based on the data we process. 